I'm here with Rich, my husband, and co-owner of Whispering Pines Shetland Sheep. And I asked Rich to join us because um, I wanted to talk about how we use micron data and how a spinner can use micron data. Um, and so kind of just get started with, if you could just give us a little bit of your background, your education, and what qualifies you to be able to talk at length about micron data. I'm not qualified. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my, my background since 1985 is I've worked as a quality engineer. I've worked in quality engineering my, my whole life. Um, I'm also a Six Sigma Master Black Belt. So I've done a lot of uh, training and I also train a lot of people in statistics and uh, process improvement um, initiatives. And I think one of the things as a quality professional is I'm always looking to a standard to tell me what whether something is good or bad because like you get data every day and you don't really know all right that's great what does it mean um, so once I got into Shetlands I'm always looking for that standard and I think um, over the years we finally uh, discovered kind of what we're all about and what the breed is all about okay cool all right so the first thing I want you to help us with is let's say you're a hand spinner that is trying to purchase a fleece and you want a super fine fleece much like what we breed for and you're buying online you know all the shows are canceled right now so you really can't go out and feel the fleeces so how would you use micron data to ensure that you are getting a super fine fleece i mean is there a way you can use that data to accomplish that of course i mean i think that's one of the things as a spinner or a fiber person is you you want that information so you should you should ask for it at all times so when i looked at a micron report so just step back a little bit every year we send out our sheep uh, we take a sample from the midrib basically in the middle of the sheep right in here and send it to the lab in texas a m and they basically measure the fiber diameter of all the fibers in the sample. They measure along the whole length and then they measure measure the, all the fibers so you get a within fiber and a between fiber uh, readings. And what they're doing is measuring the diameter. But when they measure the diameter, you're going to get back a report and I'll show you on the micron report what it looks like. They're going to get uh, basically raw statistics like these, which is what I really like. But you're also going to get a report that shows a histogram of all the different readings that they took on the, on the sample. So what you're looking for as a hand spinner is the average, obviously. And that's referred to as the AFD. So there's your distribution. But you've got an average fiber diameter and we've got, you've got some that are very fine, some that are coarse. That's what you want to look for first of all is your average or AFD. That tells you on average how fine your fibers are. But that's not the whole story. You also want to look at the variability, right? So variability is called your standard deviation and that's the width of the, well, the standard deviation is not the width of the distribution, but you also want to, it leads you to that information. You want to know how much variability do I have? How wide is that distribution? So in a perfect world, that actually does exist, by the way. You want a distribution that looks more like this, like the green curve. It's narrow, not as wide, not as much variability. Same average, though. I mean, you, you could look at the average of those two fleeces and you'd say they're identical. Well, they're not identical. So when the Texas A&M lab, when they do these samples, how many fibers do they actually test to come up with this distribution? They'll, they'll test, they'll take hundreds of readings. Oh, okay. Because um, they want a, you know, good statistical sample of what you sent them. Okay. Now, granted, you're sending them only a small portion of the sheep. You're just the mid-side. So that kind of represents the front, which is always finer, and the back, which is always coarser. But still, it gives you a nice picture of the, the, char the character of the fleece, what kind of fleece is it, and what you, what you can expect from the whole, whole fleece. So the other thing you want to look at when you're talking about fibers, I said, yeah, you want to look at the variability, you want to look at AFD. There is one metric that you should probably look at. It's called the spinning fineness. It's called SF. And that essentially takes a bunch of statistics and it's a calculation. 
And as a rule of thumb, you want to look at the SF should be finer than your AFD. So on the best fleeces, say you have an AFD of 24 microns, your spinning fineness should be less than 24. It should be 23 microns or whatever. So always look at that. If you've got a, if you're looking at a fleece and the spinning fineness is greater than the AFD, you know you've got, um, so you're going to have some issues with that fleece if you want to use it for next to skin type. Right. Usages. So we're just talking about select using the data for a super fine fleece. There's nothing wrong essentially with anything. Yeah, there are other types that. of Shetland fleeces, and I'll go through some of these <laughs> shortly, that are perfectly fine for other applications, um, and perfectly Shetland for that matter. Um, the last metric I wanted to mention is called the coarse edge mean. It's called CEM. Uh, I think if you look at the average, the spinning fineness, and your coarse edge mean, those are going to kind of tell you a lot of information about that fleece. And there's a lot of statistics. I hate to sell them all short because they're all important. But what the coarse edge mean is, is it takes the average of the 5% of the coarsest fibers. So when you look at it, there's another distribution of coarse fibers in every fleece, quite frankly. But in a fine fleece, you should have less. It should be smaller. So the difference between the average of the main fleece, the overall average, and your course is 5%, should be less than 10, 10 microns. Uh, the reason for that is if you've got um, even a, that's just uh, an extreme example, a 20 micron AFD, but then you're spinning, your course edge mean, or your CEM is 15, that means you've got at least 5% of that fleece is 35 microns. And that's on a really good fleece. Not many fleeces uh, micron at AFD of 20. That's really low for a Shetland. So it's very important to know that. You don't want another distribution of very coarse fibers in there. So you should always ask about the CEM. So what, would the, what, would, what kind of a fleece would have that type of a distribution? Is that like a dual coated fleece? Yeah, so yeah the CEM is also indicative of double coating. Oh. And again, that's, there's nothing wrong with a double coated Shetland fleece. Um, within reason. Um, historically speaking, uh, you've got some double coating, they call it the beaver coating in, in Shetlands, but that's a different thing than what a lot of things that we see over in the United States, which is a, a lot longer and a lot more double coated, more like an Icelandic type fleece. Mm -hmm. Shetland fle fleeces should not look like that, and I'll give you some examples here in a minute. Okay. But just, just as a rule of thumb, those are three stats that I think are important that a spinner should ask about. Okay, and I'll put this in the show, the notes um, underneath this video of the numbers that you want to look for if you are specifically trying to find a super fine fleece. Um, all right, so I guess the next thing I want to ask you about is a few years ago, I remember you and a few of the other Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association members sent samples over to Jameson and Smith, specifically to Oliver Henry, to get his evaluation. And I thought that was really interesting and um, wanted to just have you talk about that experience a little bit. And well, first of all, that experience was really cool because um, Oliver Henry, for those of you who don't know, don't know who he is, He's probably the world's most foremost authority on Shetland wool grading. He was the Shetland wool uh, sorter, for lack of a better word, not to insult him with the title, but for 40 years at Jameson and Smith, he was their head wool grader. And he would take the entire clip every year and sort it out into five different grades. So you've got super fine, which is the top grade. You've got fine, good, heavy, and then the worst grade is rough. So he's got five grades to work with, and he tries to sort, not tries, he does sort the fleeces into those, those various grades. Uh, now at Jameson and Smith, only maybe 3% of the clip is, gets the super fine grade. Uh, it's a tough grade to hit, and um, That's you know. That's what they make their lace weight yarn with, is that right? Yeah, and that goes, as far as I know, I've talked to several people there, and they all said it goes, only goes into their, their lace weight. Uh, yarns. Um, again, there's not that much of it. Only 3% is super fine. So it's their best grade, and that's what you expect to be their uh, finest and softest fleece. You know, we made this chart back when we first started doing the super fine, and we actually used these different um, grades 
for our wool, but then we kind of got away from it just because everything that we breed now is super fine. So yeah, right? that's a great point too because originally I didn't think we were going to be focused on that end of the spectrum. I thought we'd get a little of this, a little of that, but as we as we kind of evolved as a breeder, we kind of focused in on the super fine fleece because yes, in Shetland maybe only three to three and a half percent of the the uh, annual clip is super fine. Most of what we have is, is a flock is super fine because it's the rarest type of Shetland. So I thought, well, if we're gonna raise Shetlands, why not raise the rarest kind? Because certainly you don't want, Shetlands are known to be the finest of the British breeds. And that goes back to the 1700s and before. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what they, they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be small, fine bone sheep and it's supposed to be super fine, or not super fine necessarily, but the finest of all the British breeds that existed back, back then. So that's what we're trying to preserve here, and it's important, um, you know, we have fine sheep as well, fine and super fine is really where we focus. But the super fine grade of fleece gives, as you know, gives you a lot more um, features that maybe you're not gonna get from other breeds or even other Shetlands. You get greater, um, Smaller crimp, finer, It's uh, the elasticity is greater. And again, I'll show you here in a second. This is the this is just a skein of yarn, but you can sort of see the balance and the elasticity. Of yeah, it. I mean, that's just not what you see typically in a Shetland. Okay, so anyways, back to the samples we sent to Oliver yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so I'll just walk through a few of the comments that he made. I unfortunately sent like 20 samples for him to look at. And also, we wouldn't have been able to do this if not for Kelly Bartles at OK Acres, Shetlands. Her and Garrett Ramsey were planning a trip to go over there, so they asked if we had any samples we wanted to have graded. So they met with Oliver on one of the days on their trip, and he was, left the samples with them. He was fortunate, or gracious enough to make comments about all of them um, and grade them. Okay. So we'll start off with this one. Now, this is not bad Shetland. It's, you can see it's wavier than crimpy, but it's still considered crimp. So if you looked against the standard, you would say, all right, it's wavy, it qualifies, because it's got some crimp to it. Not very elastic. Um, you stretch it out, it's probably six or seven inches long, fully stretched. You can see the tip, there's a double coating there. So let me just read, his comments, then also the statistics that I have on this. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. So it's a 26 AFD, which is not bad at all for a Shetland. So if you only look at that, you'd say, yes, this is exactly what I want. Um, CEM is 13, which again, uh -huh. is not awful, but now you've got a big population of fibers that are 13 microns higher than the 26. So you've got 39 micron fibers in there and that's significant because once you get at 30 microns you really that's what they call the scratch factor the itch factor it starts to feel the typical wool scratchiness that people notice so you want to get most of the fibers below 30 if you can do it uh, let's see so what Oliver's comment was is that it's similar to the Shetland rough uh, rough grade um, which is the coarsest, I guess, of the grades. Yeah, so if he got one of these, a fleece like this in Shetland, he would throw it in the rough bin, which only means that there's different applications to, be, to use it for. You can make rugs out of it, you can make uh, pot holders or whatever somebody might make with something. You don't need ultra fine, super fine fleeces. Mm -hmm. You don't need the, the crimp that we would use for yarn and that kind of thing. Right. So nothing wrong with it. Uh, we don't have anything like this in our flock anymore because it's not where our focus is, but certainly nothing wrong with it. Although some people would disagree with me on that comment. All right, the next one, you can see a, quite a difference. So you can, right away you can see more crimp, finer crimp, smaller crimp. It's more elastic. It's just a finer fleece. You can feel the, the, the difference where this one has more of a, even though it's 26 microns, it has more of a binding twine type feel to it. I would say it feels like more hairy. It, it is, because you got a lot of coarse outer hair on that the first one I showed you. This one does not have that. So what did he say about this one? All right, 
Now, interesting enough, this one is actually 27.1 microns. It's higher, really? it's higher in average than the first one that we looked at. <laughs> but when you're trying to make a next to skin quality garment, there's no comparison between those two fleeces. So what else, well, why is that then? So the CEM is 7.0, that's the big difference right away. So what that tells you is there's a very little outer coat. You're, what you're getting is a more consistent fiber. So it says 27.1, but you're getting a more, there's more low fibers, um, low diameter fibers than high fibers in this, in this sample. Um, so what did he say about that? His, the comment that he made? P. Hmm? P. He said super fine similar to our super fine so this looks oh. more similar to what he would see in his top grade in shetland so is this considered super fine with the fine fleece shetland sheep association standard no because 27.1 would be to be super fine premium in the fine fleece shetland sheep association you have to be 25 microns or less oh, okay. now i don't have the spinning fineness because if your spinning fineness was less than 25 it would qualify for, for super fine. Uh, I only have the AFD on my sheet, so I don't know if oh, that would, okay. and I doubt it's gonna be two microns, the SF is gonna be two microns less than the AFD, but it, it can happen if it's consistent enough. Especially with a CEM of 7.0, it's possible that it would be close to that, but I don't think it would quite qualify as super fine. Okay. So keep in mind, Oliver doesn't have micron data. He's doing all this by hand, and he's judging the character of the fleece, the, the type of fleece it is. And if there's a large, coarse outer um, guard hair, he's not gonna put it in the super fine group because mm -hmm. it's too many coarse fibers in it. So the next one is um, similar. I mean, it looks similar. It's, it's a little bit finer. You can see it's finer crimp, mm -hmm. it's more, even more elastic. Um, if you really want the elasticity in your yarns, you know, like for making sweaters or things that really, you want that type of elastic, You've got to have the finer crimp like this. It's the only way you're going to get it. All right. So the length is approximately the same as the last one we looked at. And I'll just read the comments he made. 23.5 AFD, first of all. That's, we tested this. He didn't. He just graded it. So AFD of 23.5, CEM of 7.3, so almost the same as the last one we looked at. Um, he called this super fine plus, oh, really? which obviously isn't a real grade. So he's just being polite to us uh, by saying nice comments. Um, what he said is he's never seen Shetland as fine as this, it has a denser crimp. And what he's saying is that it's a very tight and small crimp, uh, tightly packed, in other words, not loose and wavy like the first sample that we looked at. So that was, it was nice of him to say that. Um, yeah, definitely. And again, we have the benefit of the fiber uh, micron results that he did not have. All right, so F is, again, it's gonna be similar to the last one. You can see it's a little different. You don't see quite as fine a crimp, but it is very elastic. I like the other one better. The yeah. One before. Um, Although this has got a nice length to it. So that AFD is 26.1, which interesting enough is the same as the very first one that we looked at that was more double coated. Oh. Uh, CEM 7.4, super fine plus again is how we graded it. And it says finer than our super fine. So that's just a few examples of, of kind of what Oliver thought of some of these fleeces, and I've got a bunch of comments on a bunch of different ones that I sent in. Now keep in mind, when he judges, not judges, when he grades fleeces, he is a judge as well, but he's looking at the whole fleece, not just a staple like we're giving him. So it's grossly unfair to ask him to put a grade on something that's so small, such a small sample. Right. So he can only look at that and say, well, based on what I'm seeing, this is what I, what I how I would grade it. If he looked at the whole fleece, he might look at it differently. Right. So one thing I wanted to say, when I sell Roth leases, I provide the Micron data. I take four of the different pieces of information we collect. And I think that from what you just said, I probably should add coarse edge mean on here because I don't really provide that information like on my Etsy shop and stuff. So should I put that in there? Right now I'm putting in the AFD standard deviation, which you talked about those two, spinning fineness I put in there. 
Yeah, I mean, you really don't know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> no, there's a reason for that, though, because there are other metrics. Like I said, there are other statistics on the report that really can give you the same information. I'm just, I just wanted to focus on three you could narrow it down to. You've got the coefficient of variation, which you do put on there. You do put the standard devi deviation on there. But usually when I start talking about standard deviation, that's when people's eyes roll to the back of their head. Yeah. Um, but I could certainly do a future episode on that. If, if yeah, I think that would be great. Could. I think that would be really great. Um, but it's an introduction anyways. Here's some high level useful statistics that people can use okay but yeah the ones you have on the sheet are the right ones it's just that you know you don't want to put the whole micron report on no, there it's a little overwhelming um all right well i think that um one thing i am going to do too i made a note here i'm going to put a link to the texas a and m website so if you want to go on their site they probably have information about the service they provide and then um I also, there was a really cool video I've seen recently of Oliver Henry doing a sort of fleeces, and I'll put a link to that in the bottom here in the show notes as well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to ask you, Rich, when you got the package back with Oliver's handwritten notes, I mean, you saw his writing and everything, I mean, how did you, what was your reaction? How did you feel reading all that? I wept openly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously this guy's, you know, the top wool grader in the world. And, you know, it's not, I've never met him, so it's disappointing I haven't met him. But, you know, lacking that, just seeing his handwritten notes and comments about, you know, something that we raised was, was pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so it was an honor to have him do this, and I was grateful that he, he did that. And someday, hopefully, I'll get a chance to thank him for doing that. Yeah, I hope so, too. All right, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>